Welcome back to Kelvin's Coin TV, everybody. My name is Ross. Today, we are continuing our playthrough of Pool of Radiance. On today's menu, finishing the slums, which is technically the first quest of the entire campaign. Uh, we did Kuto's Well, which is technically the second or third. Uh, but now we're going to finish off the slums. We're going to level up and then we're going to move on from there. So let's take it away. First up, the Rope Guild, where we fight some trolls and ogres. Really difficult encounter. I hope I survive. Let's get there. Or just north of the entry to the old rope guild. We're going to save it. Nah, I don't have to save it. You have entered the mysterious building that was once the rope guild. Most who venture into this, into its twisty halls, never return. We cannot access our map here. It does not here. Luckily, I think I have this memorized. So the first thing we want to do is go easterly. Over to the far east here. I'm lost. <laughs> I got it. There's a shop. Here it is. A man hurries forward. I'm sorry, noble ones, but I have nothing to sell. What do you do? We can leave, we can attack, or we can speak. We're going to speak, uh, and the name, the word we're going to give is Olo. O-H-L-O. Olo is the name of the boss in the slums. We would not know that at this point, but I have played this game hundreds of times. Um, and I know pretty much all of it. If we were to go to that boss fight first, we do have an opportunity to parlay with the wizard Olo, um, who's sort of running the slums for the boss. Uh, and he will, if we parlay with him, we can accept a job from him, which is to go to this guy, uh, speak his name, Olo, and then get a package and then return the package to him. I have done that in a playthrough before, gone through with it. You get a random magic item as a result, but you never get the reward for clearing the slums. So we're going to speak. What do you say? Type a single word. Olo. Wait a moment, the man says. He hurries to the back of the booth and returns with a package. Here, he says. Okay, we got the package. Now, we go all the way to the west. I am concentrating. Yep, this is the way. Nope, 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 nope. There we go. All right. In here is the troll fight. Some monsters are tossing a sack of grain. When the sack breaks, they wail, Oh no, what can we throw now? One looks your way. I know, he says. Bring it on, you green bastard. Okay, so I'm going to do something risky. The juice gets to go first. We're going to cast our new spell, Stinking Cloud. I want to put it right there in this square. Because it covers a four squares from here, one to the right, and then two to the bottom. One just below it, and one to the right of it which will target these three creatures. Hopefully it renders them all helpless. The risk is if this troll here is not rendered helpless, he can swing at the juice and take her down. We kind of need her up for this fight, but there's a difficult encounter. We're going to take the risk. So here we go. YOLO. Stinking cloud right here. Target. Come on, come on, come on. No, that's bad. All right, we're gonna tool on the troll to protect or a magic user. Crosshair plus one. Oh, you missed. Um, yeah, he doesn't have anything cast, so he's going to take out the ogre. Oh, hit the juice. Okay, helpless now. Take him out. Uh, you, you're going to cast magic missile. On the troll. So we have to remember... But that is where that troll died. Because you remember from last episode, I mentioned how trolls regenerate after they die. And we have to stand on the space on which they fell to prevent them from coming back to life with full hit points. Ouch. Oh, okay. He's nauseated as well. Okay. Boom. Um, use... 
Oh wait, we never we never identified these bracers. Yeah, her armor class is a lot better now. Sleep will not work here. Uh, and this is a magical quarterstaff. What is the scroll? It's magic missile. Yeah, let's cast it. It was a good time to spend resources like this. Nice. You also cast magic missile. Not as concerned about the ogres as I am with the trolls. That was really bad. Use plus one arrows. Good use of the arrows. I always tend to um conserve my arrows, the plus one arrows too much. I end up like never using them in a, in a playthrough. So figured I'd do it now. All right. We got one troll covered. Other troll covered. I'm actually gonna done guard. Yeah, I'm gonna shoot again. That actually would have taken out the other troll, but we wouldn't have been able to get to that spot to stand on. So I'm actually kind of glad that uh, it didn't work out that way. Oh, he's trying to flee. Oh! All right, this is a problem. We gotta, we gotta stay. We gotta stay in these squares. Just one, one player, one PC has to stay in the squares. So the juice is gonna do that. He's foolishly gonna move up. He's gonna cast cure wounds on himself. A uh, helper is going to fire the short bow some more. Oh, they get hit points back. Uh, he's going to foolishly move up as well. Actually, he's going to take one shot with his bow. We're going to use regular arrows for this one. Oh, oh got it hit. All right, let's go back to shield. Sword and shield. Whoops. That uh, was a short bow. There it is. Shield plus one. All right, we did it. Done quit. Done quit. No, I do not. We did it. Yes. Money. Take the platinum and the jewelry. Whoops, whoops, whoops. Zero. And uh, items. Oh, cool. A ring, a cleric scroll, and a magic user scroll. Cheese, why don't you take that ring and the cleric scroll and the juice, take that magic user scroll. We have to get those identified. Nope. Uh, we're gonna, gonna rest really quickly and rememorize spells. So uh, the spells we memorize now are actually gonna be pretty important for the boss fight. So we're gonna memorize sleep a lot. Everyone's gonna get asleep. I gave everybody a magic missile because I knew there was gonna be a stinking cloud between us and a lot of the trolls. And um, magic missile is pretty effective against trolls. Stinking Cloud. Yeah, she's gonna, she, we're gonna do two sleep spells. And, uh, yeah. Get her some hit points back. Okay, let's head over now to the final fight. Okay, so remember, through this door was the final fight. These rooms are all empty, there's nothing here. That room right there to our right is where the final encounter happens. So let's just do a quick little save and then we will jump in. Go! Pick. All right, Bash. You have done well. Give me the potion and you will be rewarded. What do you do? Refuse to give. You presume too much, the man says quietly. He gestures. All right, this is what we're up against. Lots and lots of hobgoblins. He's a level three magic user. And he's got two orc leaders. We want to put him and the archers to sleep. And we want one person free to fire a bow and take them out. So we need to protect that person for a few rounds, which means the juice is probably going down, <laughs> which is really unfortunate. Hopefully sleep has a decent enough range. We're going to do it right here. Oh, it didn't affect him. Helper. 
Stay back there and see if you can take some people out. You, go forth. Do many great works. Cast sleep on him. All right, we got him. So helper next round is going to have to shoot him before he can wake up and uh, old person. We're going to try and protect the juice for a little for a little bit, for as long as we can. We would like her on her feet. Nice. Good. I had to put her in danger so that sleep could reach over there and get the archers. But she's gonna she has a stinking cloud in her back pocket. She's gonna use that to help defend herself and stay on the battlefield longer. Alright. Help her. Aya. Got him. You're gonna move there, you're gonna cast more whole person. Nice. So we're we're getting surrounded. It's just going to happen. And that's not optimal. But it's what we're what we're faced with. I'm casting sleep. He's already helpless, he's already helpless. Which would get one, two, three, four, five more. You can cast it here. Which would get one, two, three, four, five, six more. We can cast it there. One, two, three, four, five. So I think this is the winner. One, two, three, four, five. No, sorry, this. One, two, three, right here. Spell casting efficiency. That's what we're about in this party. Probably gonna hold those ones next. If helper, if hamburger and helper both go down, we lose. Get some sort of cover. Take out the other archer before he wakes up. And then we can probably get him in there with melee until they start surrendering. Now a lot of this game is sitting here waiting around for your turn, which is very annoying. Can he cast him? Oh, he's out of spells. I'll try not to edit that stuff out, but sometimes it, you know, it can be a lot. And if it's a lot and nothing exciting happens, then uh, you should see some edits mid-fight. Mid um, kind of like how I have shortened some fights that were kind of boring or not needed. I know I said I was going to try and protect a hamburger, but um, the juice is in more danger. Speaking of the juice. Sure. Okay, so now we are forced into melee. Oh, he's using plus one arrows. I forgot about that. I meant to give him some non-magical ones. We didn't waste those. Oh, well. Still have 11. It's plenty for this campaign, I think, actually. You're helpless. You go down. Um, Let's cast our last whole person here. No. Oh. Rod. Rod. Guess I'll 
Oh no, he's unaffected. Oh, cheese might be going down. That's an issue. Your healer goes down is bad news. Anybody in your party goes down, it's not optimal. In fact, I would actually say it's suboptimal. He's got nine hit points left. And... Could cast a stinking cloud and incapacitate those guys. I think that's what I will do. Oh, she also has another sleep spell. That's good to know. Uh, cast cure light wounds on yourself, bud. You gotta hit something. Uh, we are handling this fight pretty well, he thinks. People are in good shape. Ugh, gotta hit something. Helper's Thaco is not high enough. We gotta find a way to uh, improve that somehow. Hmm. Alright, he would have come back out of incapacitation. Ugh. So they're starting to wake up now. Nice. Free him up to get one more helpless person before they wake up. Just like that. Alright, we damage this guy's take him out. Okay, no, I guess not. Wow, helper. Hit some sleeping people with some arrows and then peaced out. <laughs> oh. My dude, my guy. My broski. Oh, they, they're starting to wake up now. <laughs> the juice is in trouble. But they're not going after juice. There we go. Oh, okay. Luckily, it's mostly just orcs. Hobgoblins are typically tougher than orcs. They have a better armor class, and they deal a little more damage. Oh, he got one. Anybody help us still? Let's get the hobgoblin. For the reason that they are tougher. Oh, look out. Oh, 10 hit points. They only have six. They go down and they're dying at negative four. Mmm. -hmm. Are these guys all awake? No. I was thinking about casting sleep. Just to speed it up. This fight's over. We got it. They should start surrendering soon. Maybe they don't surrender in this encounter. Boom! Let me get a backstab. No, but it was enough. Great. We did it. We have cleared the slums. Party is on. Each character receives 1,248 experience. Nice. Take money. No. Nope. Items. Wand. That's a wand of magic missiles that we are going to use a lot. Nope. Anything else in this room? There's no note from the boss? Okay. Uh, I was going to quickly rest up. We're going to head back to town, collect our reward, and then we're going to move on to the next quest. All right. We have made it back to town. Uh, and we're going to go collect our reward at City Hall. Don't care about proclamations, because the, the clerk will tell us what they are anyway. At your entry, the council clerk begins looking through a stack of papers. Before I can offer any commissions, must see if you are due a current reward. Clerk speaks. Your clearing of the slum areas permits us to expand. Here's your reward. 675. Modest, but I'll take it without complaint. Uh, that's it. Great. Clerk shuffles through her papers. On the matter of commission, I can offer the following. Silkle Keep on Thorn Island must be cleared. 
Council is offering a reward for books, maps, tomes, etc., which provide useful information about Flan before the fall. The reward is tied to the value of the information. That one is Mendor's library, which we cannot get into until we learn a knock spell. A weapon of great power is to be auctioned to our enemies. This auction is to be held in Potal Plaza. Find out what the weapon is and return. Potal Plaza is the next block after Kuto's Well, which we finished in the last episode. These are all the commissions currently available. I think we're going to do um, Sokol Keep. But first, we're going to get some of my weapons identified and level up. Uh, that's nothing. Actually, have trade helper. Two items. Ready. Got nothing. All right, cheese has a flail. Flail plus one, the ring. Not enough money. Okay, that's that's what it said. Oops. Jeez. ID the ring. Ring of fire resistance. Ooh, give that to hamburger helper. We're going to give it to helper, actually. So, Torx is going to roll with one spell. So, the reason why I gave it to helper, not hamburger, is the second person in your party in this game tends to actually be closer to where you would cast something like a fireball. <laughs> we'll give it to him first. So, to find out what's on this, we're going to go back to the inn and... Read it, basically. The juice. That's some stuff. Like, the bracers. Armor class 4, for sure. Magic user scroll, and the wand. Not enough money. Eh. ID, yes. Wand of magic missiles. ID, yes. Staff plus 1. This banded mail? Ooh, this banded mail is magical. Abandoned mill plus one. Mm. Everyone's wearing plate mail, so abandoned mill plus one and plate mail are pretty much the same thing. Right? Am I wrong about that? <laughs> Let's test it. Trade, two cheese. We got two things to test with cheese. One is, is he better with the base or the plus one fail? Probably the plus one fail. Is he better with... <laughs> look at that icon. Why did I do that? Um, and the other thing is, is he better off with plate mail or with banded mail plus one? I think they would be one and the same, but we're going to check it out. So first, we're going to do ch check, check the armor. His armor class is negative two. You see there on the far left, under where it says level four, AC minus two, HP 23, weapon armor status. Negative two. The lower, the better, remember. Yeah, negative two is the same thing. Maybe we can give it to an NPC. Maybe we can just sell it. We're going to check our... Um, we're going to check our... Ash level. After we test the mace and flail. So what I'm looking at is actually over here. You can't see my finger. Uh... Like, not encumbrance, but what's next to encumbrance? Thaco and damage. So Thaco, once again, is to hit armor class 0. Right now it's 17. We want that to be lower. Damage is 1d6 plus 3, which means it deals a minimum of 4 and a maximum of 9. So Thaco was 17, now it's 16. And 1d6 plus 4. So now our minimum is 5, maximum 10. So it's it's a little better. We will be using the flail. So now what is our cash level? Hamburger's got plenty. Actually, we're gonna we're gonna sell a piece of jewelry. And we're gonna sell another piece of jewelry. There we go. And we'll sell a couple gems too. Chop. 1546. And then we're gonna share it. Gives everybody 387. 
which is enough to see if they gain a level. So we're going to head right to the training hall and see if anybody is eligible to level up. All right, hamburger as a magic user. Yes. Uh, he's going to learn stinking cloud now as well. Helper as a magic user. Not enough experience. The juice as a magic user. Yes. She's going to learn knock. Okay. Nice. Cheese as a cleric. Train. Not enough experience. Okay. Let's check out the fighters and rogue next. Okay. Hamburger as a fighter. Not enough experience. Okay. Helper as a fighter. Not enough experience. Okay. We're going to see helper can become a level. What would it be? Level four thief. These typically require fewer experience points than other classes. Nope. Okay. Okay, so it was just Hamburger and the Juice who leveled up as magic users. We will memorize new spells for them. Do you want to say? Yes. Helper will pay. Magic, memorize. Thinking Cloud, yes. Yes. Uh, we're going to get another magic missile and a stinking cloud. Rest it up. All right, let's head over to Sokol Keep. We're going to hold on to that banded mail plus one, methinks. It's going to come in handy later. To the north is the passenger dock. By order of the city council, the harbor master says, the only boat out is going to Sokol Keep. You can catch it at the end of the pier. You board a boat. The boat disembarks you at Sokol Keep. I don't know if that's the proper use of the word disembarks. But let's look past it. All right, turn on search. You stand below the rotting remains of the once mighty gates of Sokol Keep. Echoing footsteps are dimly heard within the keep. To the west rises a mound of reeds. What's in the mound of reeds? The skeleton of a long dead elf lies hidden by rocks and reeds. Its weapons and equipment are badly rusted and corroded by salt. Its leathers are worm-eaten and crusted in dirt. In a pouch on the remains is a crumbling parchment scroll with the words, The last part is eaten away. Goldbox games come with a translation wheel with uh, um, Esperar and Defec runes. You're supposed to line them up a certain way, and it spells out messages. This note says that first line is Lux. L-U-X. The next one is Samosud, S-A-M-O-S-U-D, one word. And the last is Shestni, S-H-E-S-T-N-I. They are passwords that we need. The first one you're going to use, there are undead patrols walking around. We do not have to fight them. When they confront us, we say Shestni and they will leave us alone. In the center of the keep, there is a church, like a little chapel, that is haunted by the ghost of Ferran Martinez. You have to speak to him, Lux. And once you do so, he tells you that you speak Samosud to the Endod patrols now, that their spirits are free to get past them. All that information is right here on that. Well, just the three words, but that's all the information pertaining to them. All within Sokol Keep. So besides, um, here's the map. So besides wandering patrols of undead, there are two set encounters outside of the center. In the center, there's a huge battle with orcs and hobgoblins who are sent by the boss to, to occupy the keep. There, there's an encounter with poisonous frogs who can kill you with one hit and giant scorpions who can kill you with one hit. If you're poisoned in second edition, you are dead. Sorry. In this game, at least. In this game, not in second edition. Second edition, when you're poisoned, you just lose hit points every few seconds or every round or something like that. Um, until the poison is neutralized. Uh, in this game, if you're poisoned, you're dead. <laughs> All right, so let's walk around. I think I want to go here. Giant scorpions. The interior is overrun with insects. At your footstep, they fall from the walls and ceiling. Ew. 
All right, let's not die. So far, we're off to a bad start. Throw some darts. Nope. They get multiple attacks. Some of their claws, some of their tail. They hit you with their tail, you, you're, you're a goner. All right, so it looks like two attacks. One, uh, two with claws, one with tail. Okay, come on, guys. There we go. Huge scorpion. I'm sorry. Not giant scorpion. Huge scorpion. Okay. That's all there. On the other side of the keep... Oh, we're going north. A pack of undead suddenly appears. We want... We can combat. We can wait. We can flee. We want to parlay. Nice. What do you say? Type a single word. Chest me. Your dead leave. Yeah. Yeah. An undead patrol confronts you. Do you give the password? Yes, I do. I think the frogs are up here. An undead patrol confronts you. Do you give the password? Yes. Am I wrong? Broken hearth and bellows dominates the collapsed remains of a blacksmith shop. Floor is spongy and damp. The croaking frogs greet your entry. Entry. They're right here. Yeah. A croaking frog. No, sorry. <laughs> a croaking rises in volume. Combat. Yeah, these things can kill us. Poisonous frog, they're called. Oh. Uh, we need her to save her darts. We forgot to purchase more. Oh. Nope. Okay. Get him. Yes. No one died. Success. No loot. You know what there is, though? An armory. You enter the keep's old armory. All of the weapons and armor have decayed into uselessness. Baron Martinez does tell us this, though. There's a secret door right here. Yump. Passing through an illusionary wall, you enter a portion of the keep that remains untouched by time or ravaging armies. There's a glow in the northwestern corner of the room. He tells us that, so it's kind of like your reward for clearing the keep. I'm going to do it first because I think there's something there that might help us for the final fight. I don't remember exactly what's here, but special stands in the northwestern corner hold equipment. On stands are a shield, a mace, a sword, and a small suit of chainmail. Equipment has not been tarnished by the passing years. Do you take it? Yes. 500 experience. The shield is a plus one. Oh, that's a plus one longsword. Uh, sure, you can take the chainmail too, helper. And cheese, you're going to take the mace because I think maces are better than flares. flails. They go is 16, damage 1d6 plus 4. They go 15, 1d6 plus 5. Oh, it's a plus. It's a plus 2 mace. Sick. Helper, armor class is negative 2. Puts this shield on. They got a three plus one shield. They goes 18 damage 2d4 plus two. Oops. They go 17 1d8 plus two. So same maximum damage, lower minimum damage. Minimum is three, three to 10, as opposed to four to 10. But the Thaco is lower, right? Thaco 17, Thaco 18. So the, there's a toss up between hitting more often or dealing more minimum damage. You know what? He can't carry this chain now. Give it to the cleric. Clerics are kind of tanky. His movement is still three. Oh man. Uh, trade the platinum, dude. You don't need that. Nah. Uh, Six. We need helper to have movement. Helpers are a thief, man. So we have a choice here to stick with the broadsword and hit and deal more minimum damage or hit more often with the longsword. Oh, put on the ring of fire resistance. 
think we're going to stick with the broadsword. Windy 8 plus 2. Minimum of 3 damage. As opposed to a minimum of 4. You know what? I changed my mind. We're going with the plus 1 longsword. I want to hit more often. Because he has the chance to do backstab damage. Just kind of like sneak attack in the most recent edition of D&D. Alright, let's do it. Loud commotion rises from the courtyard. Bashing open the door, a large force of orcs and hobgoblins rushes you. Jerks. Sleep. Why don't you guys just sleep it off? No, I don't want to abort the spell. Manual. Right there. Nope, right here. It takes a slightly more hobgoblins out of the fray. You know, why don't you hang back for a little bit? Fire some arrows at the sleeping peoples. You reach this guy? You can. See ya. Let's cast some hold person. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, you son of a gun. Yeah. Ugh. Told her she could take him out. We need her to cast sleep somewhere. You. These guys are all out of range. So you. And you. Got him. Oh, get away from her. Fights like this are going to get a lot easier once we learn Fireball. <laughs> Excuse me. No. Uh, okay. You got 15 hit points left. Yeah, uh, I think you're actually gonna end up using. Um, we can wait until there are more people on you. Ugh. Uh, we're gonna cast our whole person again. We're gonna cast our sleep. I'm just gonna cast it on this guy so he stops shooting at us. Give Hamburger a chance to... He's got three turns to take out the leaders before he gets surrounded. This might be a good idea. One for you. One for you. And one for me. Nope. Got him. I just got one hit point left. Crap. God, I really should help her, but these guys waking up is going to be very bad news for us. When, when the enemy has archers, 
they do seem to hit you more often. It's almost like they have more modifiers to to hit, um, and it makes it interrupts your spell casting. It weakens your party. It's really a problem, which is why I'm so hyper focused on inca incapacitating and then taking out archers before they can recover from the ill spell effects. Oh, she doesn't have one hit point. She's got 15. That was the orc. All right, so we got some leeway here. Bash that guy down. Bash that guy down. Bash that guy down. Take him out while they're sleeping. Or held. Seems to be the optimal way to do it. Okay. Just one more round. And then Hamburger can actually help us plow the road. It might have been a mistake to split up Helper and Cheese. Um, but the fact that they made some space makes the AI sort of cluster around both of them, which gives us a nice envelope of space for Hamburger to shoot, but now he's now he's got a guy next to him he can't shoot. I might actually risk uh, an opportunity attack just to take out that other archer, because I really think it's that important. We need some more whole person help. You know what? I can just do this. Hold him. Hold him. Helper's got 15 hit points. Could use some help. You. Help. Not effective. Help. Okay, great. Now we can just step away. Hamburger also has some spells to cast as well. Very um, good having multiple magic users in, in a party. All right, cool. So we took out all the leaders, which is aces. Oh, helper's getting helper's getting beat up. Sometimes it's good to leave helpless people there next to you so that they can block people who are trying to hurt you. Um, oh, she hasn't cast any spells yet. There we go. Goes down. Usually pretty liberal with casting magic missiles since we, there are many wands of magic missile to be found in the game. Because she has all her spells, I might actually send Hamburger down to help help her. Which I guess is a little ironic. Uh, Stinking Cloud. Right here. One more whole person. Actually, you... And then, yeah, sure, this guy. Mm. Okay, uh, put your short bow away, my friend. You did some good work with that. Shield plus one, longsword plus one. And uh, cast sleep. Right there. Sleep is an awesome spell. I like it so much, I might cast another one. So aptly named, too. They just go to sleep. <laughs> and then you murder them. I would like to take a turn now. Uh, Excellente. 
Who's getting missiled? I think you are. Um, yeah, another sleep. Let's do it. Right there. Another good thing about Stinking Cloud is that it, it does ugh, create like a wall that the monsters won't, they won't, the AI is smart enough at least to not put somebody in danger like that. They won't walk into a cloud most of the time. Depends on the creature's intelligence score actually. And if they can actually understand that it's uh, harmful to them. Oh, that's a problem. Uh, speaking of Stinking Cloud. Oh, he's already helpless. Maybe. Maybe focus on the sleeping ones. Good. Excellent. Eat it. That one wasn't asleep, I thought it was. <laughs> Uh-oh. I was coughing, so... Got to crack him over the skull! Hamburger is actually going to take the center, I think. The juice can handle herself, it would seem. Uh, where does the fog clear a little? Over here, okay. Who's helpless? You are. <laughs> Test. Well, now's a good time to test out our new Wanda Magic Missiles. I forgot to scribe scrolls. Well, I think I already went this round, so I targeted the other one. Ugh. No one's helpless. All right, we're making progress. We are thinning their numbers. Mm. It's something. All right, they're starting to surrender. We won. We did it. I just tried to punch him. I thought I had my quarter staff out. Still had the wand. Oh, well. I think everyone else is sleeping, so let's just, uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Pick up the trash here. Okay, they woke up and surrendered immediately. That's it. We win. Nope. Only 281 experience for that. That's crazy. That's just crazy talk. 
On a hobgoblin body, you find a note that you copy into your journal as entry 57, which I will read to you now. The journal is a ratty piece of parchment with large writing on one side. Quote, Our spies in the city inform us that a party of invaders will travel to Sokol Keep to free it. To, co to combat these invaders, assemble a force of no less than three squads. Travel by boat from the small docks at the west of town to Sokol Keep. Find the adventurers in or around Sokol Keep. Kill them before they can return to the city council with information about the true situation at the keep. Return with the invaders' heads as proof of your completion of your mission. Upon completion, you will be rewarded with food, treasure, and many slaves. Sign the boss. Seems to be his favorite reward. Food, treasure, and many slaves. This was once the chapel of the keep. Inside the doorway are the dried husks of two orcs. Their faces twisted with terror. Large altar dominates the southern wall. A pale form rises before you. Parlay. Nice. What do you say? Lux. The shape speaks. I am the life form of Farid Martinez, bound with the undead spirits of all who die within these walls to guard the keep. Tell me, has the city been freed? We can tell the truth, we can lie, or we can run away, or we can tell the truth. Farin speaks. The city fell long ago to the unblessed creatures imbued with the might of a magical pool. Chief among these were Tyrant Thraxus, Edronka, and Torath. With their powers, they ruled and united all else, driving forward to destroy us all. The sage Mendor worked hard to gather a rec uh, record of all these things, but they are lost now, his library over overrun. To pass my guards on the way out, speak the word Samusid. Now we are freed, our duty done. Farron fades away. All right, I think we cannot rest here. So we shall just mosey on out using Samusid. The hall is empty, save for the signs of a recent battle. Yeah, our battle. Whoops. Pack of undead suddenly appears. Parlay. Nice. What do you say? Type a single word. Sam said. The undead leaf. I think, yeah, the cool little animations. They're really simple, but that is freaky as heck. Yes, we give the password. The undead leaf. Okay. Do you want to take a boat back to Flan? Yes, I do. You board a boat. Okay, it is nighttime. We are going to the inn first to rest up and heal. Then we'll go to City Hall. We will get some items identified, and then we will see if anybody wants to level up. Um, scribe scrolls. So scribing scrolls means a magic user takes what's written on a scroll, copies it into their spell book. It renders the scroll useless, as the power of the scroll is now infused in their, their spell book. But now they can prepare that spell uh, after, a, after they rest, for the requisite number of hours it takes to memorize that spell. So we're going to scribe Detect Invisibility, because we don't know that one. Protection from Evil, 10-foot radius, we're going to scribe that. Oh, we can't, we don't have the right level. There's a fireball on there, though, that we're going to save in the scroll. Try these spells? Yes. I'm going to rest. Scribing takes a little while as well. A little bit more time than it takes to memorize a spell. Hello, friend. Chop specializes in arms and armor. We're going to show you your weight or wares. Yes, you can. Um... I'm going to hold on to that broadsword, methinks. You have the shield, which is a plus one. Oh, not enough money. Whoops. Um, appraise. Gem cell, gem cell, gem cell, gem cell, gem cell, gem cell, gem cell. View. Trade. With helper. And 450. I think helper can finally maybe level up a couple times. We don't need the shield. ID, yes. Plus one. ID, yes. Plus one. Dope. Oh, he has a broadsword, too. They both have extra broadswords, huh? We'll sell one. We don't need both of them. Cheese. You have the mason, some chainmail. ID, yes. Chainmail's pretty much useless. We're going to sell it. 
I don't care what plus it is. <laughs> Probably plus one. Flail, we're going to sell because we have a plus two mace, which is way better. So cheese has a lot of cash. We're going to drop it all and uh, share it. So if we say, if we go to take now, there it is. So share, because his movement was three. And I don't like that. We can sell bracers of AC six. But we give like, we get 6,000 gold and we can't really carry it. So I might actually give it to an NPC, which sounds crazy, but we can't carry that. Uh, okay, let's get a reward from town hall and then go to the training hall. You enter the city hall. As you face down the hallway, you see a guarded door. You're outside the clerk's office. Guards posted around a door in the south wall watch you closely. At your entry, the council clerk begins looking through a stack of papers. Before I can offer any commissions, I must see if you are due a current reward. Clerk speaks, with Sokol Keep in our hands, we can use boats to bypass the Barren River. Here is your reward. Wow. Wow, that's a lot of stuff. Great, we're going to share that. Clerk shuffles through her papers. On the matter of commission, she says I can offer the following. Council's offering a reward for books, maps, tomes, etc., which provide useful information about Flan before the fall. Reward is tied to the value of the information. A weapon of great power is to be auctioned to our enemies. This auction is to be held in Podal Plaza. Find out what the weapon is and return. Junior Councilman Cart uh, Cadorna has a special commission for you. His chambers are through the East Door. These are all the commissions currently available. All right, let's go through the East Door and let's meet Councilman Cadorna. I'm sure he's a lovely individual. When old Flan was overrun, a family treasure was hidden in the western building of the textile complex. Doesn't even say hi. <laughs> Doesn't even say hi, just goes right into it. The faithful servant sent to fetch it never returned. The complex is just south of Podal Plaza. Bring the treasure to me and you will be well rewarded. Okay. That faithful servant? Best NPC in the whole game. Let's level up. Okay, uh, Cheese could not level up last time. He can this time. Level 5 Cleric, baby! Okay, fighters. Nope. Yes, level 3 fighter for helper. Nice. We're going to do Potal Plaza real quick before we... Uh, call the episode... Oh. <laughs> I just walked right into a wall before we call the episode. Through this wall here, this door, is Podal Plaza. It's the next block over from Kuto's Well. There is an auction happening here. Uh, our quest is to find out what item is being auctioned off. That's it. We don't have to fight anyone. And I don't think we will. Several ways to accomplish this. Let's find out. The plaza ahead is crowded with monsters. How will you proceed? Stride boldly forward. Disguise the party as monsters. Sneak, remaining unseen. We're going to disguise the party as monsters. Always disguise the party as monsters. We're going to go to that middle building there. The one that kind of looks like uh, an exclamation point. On the other side of that, the far side, is where the auction is. Along the way, we're going to bump into different groups of monsters. We're going to have to convince them that we are monsters. So... When they demand who we are, we're going to tell them uh, something nasty. We're going to be abusive to them. Here we go. Spot a group of orcs. They glare at your party and walk on. Okay. Dum-dums. As you move, you overhear some goblins say, do you think he'll really show up? The boss, I mean? The auctioneer cries, creatures of all ages, welcome to this auction for an item both magical and powerful. The auctioneer is either a wand or staff. You wish to stand and listen, move in closer, listen to comments, or leave. We're going to move in closer. The monster shoot, ang shoot you angry looks, grumble, and turn away. Now see, the wand isn't anything special, is what that said. The bidding escalates to 5,000 gold pieces. High bid from a man in plain clothes next to an ogre. Do you wish to make a bid? Wait for a winner, or try to leave? We're going to wait for a winner. I don't remember what happens if we make a bid it might start a fight 
You up the bid. Monsters nearby turn, stare, and yell, settlers, kill them. All right. All right, cool. <laughs> okay, let's try this again. Disguise the party as monsters. Moving slowly. As you move, you overhear some goblins say, do you think he'll really show up? The boss, I mean? No. No, I don't think so. If you want this monster's opinion... You spot a group of goblins. They glare at your party and demand, Who are you? We're going to be abusive. They grumble and move on. Yeah, that's right. Keep walking. More ogres on the street. Uh, I, I didn't get that one. Spot a group of ogres. They check out your party and demand, Who are you? F off. They grumble and move on. The auctioneer cries, Creatures of all ages, welcome to this auction for an item both magical and powerful. The auctioneer is either a wand or staff. You wish to stand and listen, moving closer, listen to comments, moving closer. Monster shoot your anger, looks, grumble, and turn away. You now see that the thing is, is bullcrap. The bidding escalates to 5,000 gold pieces. High bid from a man in plain clothes next to an ogre. Do you want to make a bid? Wait for a winner? Try to leave. We're going to wait for a winner. Going, going, gone, the auctioneer cries. A man and ogre exchange the wand in a large bag, then disappear into the crowd. The auction over, the monsters grumble and turn away. Okay. Quick save of the game. We've completed the objective. The other points of interest here um, are going to be there. A tavern called the Pit. And then in the bottom right corner-ish, there is a small shrine to Bane. At the shrine to Bane, you can. Uh, there is a way for you to collect from them leather holy symbols, which will get you into the Temple of Bane. You do not have to get them in Podoplaza. It's actually kind of difficult um, to line up the circumstances for the priest to just give, hand them to you. Uh, you have plenty of opportunity later before you enter the Temple of Bane to collect leather. You just need one leather holy symbol. You will have many opportunities to find one. I would actually recommend you do not do the Potal Plaza shrine part unless you just want to run and murder a priest of Bane. Let's run and murder a priest of Bane first. <laughs> About a group of ogres that glare to party and walk on. You can recognize the Temple of Bane because it looks kind of like that building over to the right, that outcropping. I believe it's on this. There it is. I'm moving slowly because I don't want to. This is a small shrine. Symbols of Bane have replaced those of Ilmater. Now, Bane is an evil god. In second edition, Bane was the god of most bad guys. <laughs> <laughs> who weren't Tiamat or something like that, um, or worshiping a lich or something along those lines. Ilmater is a god of healing and, a, and like a patron of um, peasants and the working class and things like that. Uh, so this is really a huge 180 for a shrine like this. Let's go inside. A robed orc is sitting here. What do you do? We're going to attack him. We ain't no followers of Bane. Jeez, go. There we go. Got him. Take money. Exit items. Oh, here we go. Six leather holy symbols. Can you carry them? Not yet. All right, we have plenty. Like I said, plenty of time. To uh, there's nothing else here. Plenty of time to get those leather holy symbols. So now we're going to go back-ish to where we were. And uh, we're going to go to a tavern called The Pit. Which is down this way. All right. I think we made it. Over this door is a crude sign saying, The Pit. Two T's. Go in. You've entered a crowded tavern. You open the door into a drunk buccaneer. Glares at you. One of you shall pay for this insult. Who will it be? What do you do? We can challenge him. We can attack. We can flee. We can bribe him. I think fleeing is pretty obvious. You get out of the room, I think. Or you make a dexterity check. Maybe you don't get out of the room. And a bar fight happens. 
challenges a one-on-one -on -one fight with him. I think he's like a level four fighter or something like that. Um, not a huge challenge. If we attack, I think it's just us against everybody in the tavern. There is a way to have like two factions. Like some people in the bar in the tavern are fighting on your side, some in the people in the tavern are fighting on his. I think that's what happens if we try to bribe him. Let's try and uh, I don't want to bribe him. I'm just gonna attack. Actors anger the patrons and they attack. Great. All right, so it's us against everybody. Cool. Um, go to sleep. 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 He didn't go to sleep. What a dink. Got him. I don't think she can reach the darts from here. Oh, she can. Good. Excellent. Big old bar fight to end the episode. Great. This is what second edition D&D is all about. Um, it would have been fun to try and bribe him and um, do something like uh, something different where there are monsters on our side, but it's actually kind of confusing who's on your side and who's not. Disorientating. Oh, that's right. Sweeping. Heck yeah. Helper can sweep now, too. <laughs> Big cluster of monsters in the middle are asleep. That's great. That's just great. Good for us. Sweep. Excellente. Yeah, they're surrendering. I knew they would. Those bitch babies. You know what? Save your, uh, save your darts. Oh, he's overloaded with something. All right. There's really nothing here. I think he's got like a plus one something or other. Long story chain mail. I don't think any of those are. Maybe the shields plus one. I don't know. Or it looks like it was destroyed by experts. All right. And we will call it here. Thank you so much for watching Kelvin's coin. This has been pool of radiance. We're not even a quarter of the way through this game, maybe a quarter of the way through this game. So we've got many episodes to come. Uh, stick around. Come on back. We got many more stories to tell. I will see you in the next episode. Thank you so much. Bye now.